joined now by UCLA head coach Mick Cronin and student athletes Jaime Jaquez Jr. and Johnny Juzang. We'll open it up to questions and Ben will kick us off. The conference obviously did, Coach Cronin, the conference, the conference obviously did very well in the tournament last year. How does that, obviously you're focused on your team, but the conference success, how does that help UCLA if at all, and, uh, and especially if, you, if it can keep going where multiple teams advance deep in the tournament every year? Uh, what, what I think it definitely helps UCLA uh, and all of us. So uh, conference success in, uh, in our sports important because of the NCAA tournament bids. Uh, you know, we're all playing to go to the NCAA tournament not just getting their hot, better, you know, quality seeds. So conference uh, power, success, all of it, it, it is huge. So it doesn't just matter. I mean, it is huge. So I think we proved in our conference with three Elite Eight teams, a Final Four team, uh, four Sweet 16 teams, uh, you know, 13 wins in a tournament that, uh, you know, the, the Pac-12 basketball was powerful. Just great coaching in our league. Um, you know, I, I, the last thing I would add, Ben, is when you really look at what we all went through with the, no off season. Literally, I didn't see these guys for six months, and we all, all three of us, lived pretty close to each other. Um, they're, you know, where their parents live. So, um, what we all went through in the West Coast, we all got better as the year went on. So. Um, but it, it matters. My days back in the Big East, we had, used to have 9, 10, 11 teams in the NCAA tournament. It, it matters. Perception it filters into recruiting, not just NCAA bids, but recruiting as well. We'll go back to Ben. For Jaime and Johnny, what's been the – you guys have been back on campus for a few weeks now. What's been just kind of the excitement level and the buzz – uh, in class and, and other students talking to you about how excited they were about last season and this season as well, getting ready for it. Um, I think just being on campus now with, uh, with students, uh, it's, it's super exciting. I know when we go out, uh, myself and Johnny, uh, people come up and telling us how excited they are for our basketball games this year, especially with fans being able to be in attendance. And, you know, they're excited and we're excited and, you know, we're ready to get in the Pod Pavilion. Yeah, we're super excited to have uh, fans back and all the support there in the gym. Um, you know, we're we're just ready to compete and get after it. And you know, it's it's awesome that they're able to be there and watch it live. So I I know they're excited, and I, we're just as excited. You know, back right to Eldridge. Coach Cronin, first and foremost, congratulations on a great season last year. You guys are really, really fun to watch, made the conference proud. It's going to be kind of an awkward question, but you've got five starters coming back. Tiger Campbell, Jules Bernard, Johnny Juzang, Jaime Jaquez, and Cody Riley. Are you feeling any, any pressure to, to, like, make the Final Four again? Um, I put – these guys know me, so they know my goal coming to UCLA is to win the 12th national championship. So – I don't feel external pressure. And I think it's important as a coach that uh, they, they know what, what, what our goals are and it, to represent UCLA basketball. Uh, we have the greatest tradition in the history of our game. So we don't just play for us. Uh, we, we play for Kareem, Reggie, Barron, you keep Russell, you, you know, so that, that, that enough is, is, you know, pressure <laughs> you know you, you got to live up to that but really just trying to make those guys proud so the only way you can do it is um, they see the, all I'm worried about is practice every day and if I can help them get better then our team are, is going to get better so our motto is 
constant teaching, constant trying to improve each player because then our team will improve. We don't ever talk about, you know, we got to get back. We lost to Gonzaga on a bank, like bank shot. Like, we just don't have those talks about big goals and all that. We just try to stay focused on getting better um, and make it about them and gotcha. just day by day. I mean, that's just what we do. Uh, you, I, I think you better be that way if you have my job. Because if you start, you know, looking over at, there's one chair in Pauley Pavilion that's different color than everybody else's <laughs> Coach Wooden's chair. When you start looking around at banners and his chair and all that, I mean, you get overwhelmed quickly. So right. you just got to do your best, stay focused, uh, and be appreciative of the opportunity. I got you. I mean, I want to ask you, I, you know, I, I've never called any of you guys games. I'm kind of in the Northwest, you know, in Oregon and Washington. But I perceive you to be one of the tougher guys on your team. But tell us what it's like to play for Coach Cronin because when I watch the game, he even – as a spectator, you, you get to be a little intimidated because he's not the biggest guy, but he just comes across. What is he like when, when, when you guys pump. are in practice? <laughs> I'm dead serious. What is, what is he like when you guys are in practice? Uh, in practice, I mean, he gets on us for sure, but, I mean, it's all it's all in uh, good faith. Uh, you know, he's trying to make each and every one of us better. And, you know, uh, some of some of the things he gets upset about, it's understanding, you know, we're, we're, we're young. Uh, we, we do some – we make dumb mistakes. He makes sure to get honest about it. But, I mean, it's all out of love. And, I mean, you know, he, he, he he's a big reason of why we got to where we got to. So, I mean, just keep believing in what he preaches is something that's very important to us and our team. And that's what I try to do each and every day. Gotcha. And lastly, for, for Johnny, uh, Johnny, I wanted to know what, what made you come back to school? I, I think I can speak for probably everybody in this room. You know, the run you had in the tournament last year made me want to be an agent. I was like, wow, I want to represent that guy. He's about to get paid. So what, what made you come back to UCLA for one more season? Man, we got the chance to do something so special. Um, you know, so if we want to backtrack a little bit, you know, I, I want to feel ready to make an impact and contribute to a team. And I don't think there's another, uh, a, a better place to get ready to do that than playing for Coach Cronin and playing for the Bruins on this special team. But, you know, that's that's a side look. Like, it, it's almost a no-brainer um, when you consider that and put that together with what we have the opportunity to do this year and playing with these guys I love playing with, playing for coaches I love playing for. And I know he's going to get me better. He's going to get all of us better. And he's going to, you know, he knows what it takes to win. So it's the, it's the ultimate learning and growing environment and also – Again, with what we have, like, it's going to be a fun environment, too. So we're going to really just enjoy this and, again, take it day by day. Um, but, I mean, I, basically to sum it up, it's just such a special opportunity. It's like, how do you not? Let me go to Casey in the back left. Casey Jacobson with Pac-12 Network and Fox. Um, this is a question for the, the players. I know Coach Cronin is going to have you guys right on the defensive end. I know it's something that – Have you seen our stats? No, they were bad last year. I know. I know. I followed you guys. I'm glad you have faith in me. Look at our spin. Yeah, he's going to get you guys right. But I'm an offensive guy, so I want to ask you guys an offensive question. Every year as a player, you want to get better and improve. So I'd like to ask you guys specifically, are there things that you're adding to your offensive game this offseason that we're going to see this season? Yeah, uh, for, for me, offensively, um, Becoming a better creator and playmaker, um, being able, you know, working on seeing reads, but also being able to deliver those passes is a whole nother thing. So uh, just uh, playmaking, and that includes, you know, ball handling as well, but uh, adding that to my game, especially, um, you know, coming into this year, I mean, people know I can score, so um, I, I have an opportunity to create a lot of open shots for my teammates. Um, so that, that's something I'm aware of and I've been working on a lot I feel good about. Um, for myself, I would say one of the big things I've been working on is, uh, uh, like Johnny said, playmaking is also another thing um, that I've been working on this offseason, coming off pick and rolls, uh, trying to make the right reads, coming off screens and trying to find the open man. And along with that, being able to hit open shots uh, uh, more consistently than last year. Um, like Johnny said, people are going to probably be doubling this guy like every out every pick and roll. So just being able to, for when that happens to be able to be ready and hit shots. And uh, along with that, free throw shooting is another big thing that I'm trying to improve on. Uh, and I've been working on this offseason. Okay, we're going to 
We're gonna go to Austin up front and then back to Ben. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, Austin Scott with the State Press. There's a question that kind of touched on it earlier, but just in terms of the energy, you know, at this time last year and now going into this year, obviously you guys made the Final Four, USC made the Elite Eight, the Lakers, the Clippers, just like the overall basketball buzz in the L.A. area has been pretty insane over the last year or so with all of these teams. Just like kind of walking around campus, doing running errands like – you know, people might be noticing you, like, just in public, just random stuff like that. What's kind of, like, the energy for you guys kind of right now in comparison to last year in terms of, I'm guessing, a lot more people kind of know who you guys are and there's a lot more recognition at this point? Yeah, I mean, going out, uh, whether it's to eat or going to go to the grocery store or going even to the movies now, it's like you go out and you can't go out without someone asking for a picture nowadays. <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> You know, it, it, it's all fun. You know, it's kind of what you ask for when you go to UCLA. You want the you want the big stage. You want the recognition. And, you know, it's exciting to see because uh, everyone's so prepared and so ready for you guys to have a great season, and you don't want to let them down. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just great to see the excitement behind the program and the support. Both of us are from L.A., so um, I think it's just really special because, you know, you, you want to see this program doing well. Um, so to be a part of, you know, that climb or whatever you want to call it is, is um, there's a lot of pride. So uh, it, it's awesome to see that. I, I think that is the coolest part for me is seeing the pride from everybody else. And, you know, that makes us proud. And, you know, it's like a feedback loop and we want to keep making that happen. I'll go over to Ben. I spoke with uh, Coach Palmer at the uh, tip-off luncheon last week, and he was talking about how you were in – Coach Cronin's in late season mode. Uh, I'm assuming that's a reflection of having a veteran team. And uh, can you uh, maybe expand on that a little bit, uh, what that means and how that might reflect when we open the season? Well, with you know, with Will out, unfortunately, with the injury, uh, we have a it's, it's, you know, very veteran team because Miles is so intelligent and he's, you know, he, he's – he knew all these guys. He's seamless. He, he, you know, I think he knows what I'm going to say before I say it. So um, our starting point is just different. You know, uh, a year from now, that could be extremely different, you know, uh, if we could lose up to seven guys. I mean, you just never know. So, uh, but with this group, when you have whatever, 11, 12 scholarship guys back, you know, Peyton being the only freshman, I have to remind myself and my assistants. I, he, you know, you got to help him. At, is we're at warp speed with everybody else because these guys have played together. They've played for us, but he 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 hasn't even played college basketball, guys, and he didn't even play high school last year. So we really have to help him the most. Um, but I think that's what you know, Coach Palmer was alluding to, Ben. You, you know, it's just the the advantages of having a veteran team. Your starting point. Uh, is a little further down the line. Hopefully, your end point is further down the line as well. You can get further, you, you know, you, meaning you can become a better team because you're you're not starting from so far back, which is you know the challenge when you have a bunch of young guys, which we do not have. So definite definite advantage of, of having all these guys back. Go to Matt in the back right. Uh, this is Matt Muehlbach with the Pac-12. As for coach and the players. You know, last year going into the tournament, I don't know if you might agree, you might have been playing your best basketball that you played all season, then something clicked, you know, during the tournament. Uh, when you look back on that now and kind of then, you know, looking forward to this season, like what was it? Is it Was it one or, or two things that just seemed to really click for you guys? Well, Matt, we had different seasons. We had Johnny was out to start the year. We only had a few games with Johnny and Chris Smith, then Chris Smith's gone. We tried to hit. We we're. I think we got it up to nine and zero in the Pac-12. Cody destroys his ankle. Probably should have been out a month, but because Jalen Hill retired, um, the Cody fought through it, and it took him a while. I mean, he couldn't even make a layup for a while. But he's such a team guy. He re, and a, such a warrior. He refused to sit out for us. Um, so it took us forever to get healthy and to get used to what who's actually on our team and we can play with. And the last thing I would add to that, I, I, you know, these guys could tell you, like, I was positive. First of all, we lost in the conference tournament. It was probably a blessing. 
I know it was for Wayne. Uh, <laughs> um, but we were playing really well. See, you can play really well when you're in an elite league, which our league became elite late. We lost to an elite eight team without Johnny at the buzzer. We never trailed the whole game. We lost to Oregon, a sweet 16 team on the road in a makeup game. We didn't practice the day before because we all had to send, we had to send everybody home because we thought somebody had COVID. Then it was a false. Then we had to call everybody, hey, go to the plane. We're picking you up. And we're up nine with five to play. So, like, the result doesn't reveal the truth of how well you're playing. It's you have to actually watch. So I, I was confident with these guys. We had, a, you know, we missed some free throws late. We played some really good teams and some really tough spots. Senior day at, at Colorado. Um, good luck against McKinley right in his last game at home. Right. Good luck in that one. And we, we, we led, you know, but he took the game over, as didn't surprise me. So it doesn't mean you're not playing well. I thought, we, you know, what we needed was the win against Michigan State because I believed we were, we were had adjusted to the, the smaller team. But, and I believed, but I needed them to get a win for them to believe. And I knew if we could beat them, who did, they didn't have to travel. Uh, they were in there for the Big Ten tournament. They're all comfortable in Mackey Arena. They play there all the time. If we could overcome that, into, you know, that, that deal, having to play in that game and beat them, uh, I thought that it would get our confidence going and we had a chance to do what we did. Because we were playing well, we just didn't have the result we wanted. Okay, thanks. One, one more question for Jaime and, and Johnny. Do you guys ever play one-on-one -on -one against each other? And if you do, how does that go? Yeah, uh, we play one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one against each other a lot. Uh, I mean, not just me and him, but as a team as well. Um, I know Dave and Tiger are also guys that love to play one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, we get after it. I mean, I, I win some games, he wins some games. It's definitely back and forth. Really good competition. And, you know, whoever wins that day gets the bragging rights for that day. But, I mean, it, cha <laughs> it changes. So, yeah, that's what I have to say. Is he offensive fouls, John? He's bullied. <laughs> <laughs> I got some pounds on him. I got some pounds on him. Thank you. We'll go to Ben for the last question. How much fun are you guys having with the NIL stuff? I know that Jalen's got the cryptocurrency. Tiger's got cryptocurrency. Uh, Johnny, I know you had the skills camp. Uh, uh, Tiger looks like has a Fat Sal's thing going now. And I see fa uh, Fat Sal's has a Fat Jaime sandwich. Is that is that yours? Uh, that was actually, you know, I, I tell people that it's mine, but that was there before I got there. So, <laughs> yeah. How much fun is that for you guys and, well, and Coach? We have a, a hair product line coming out, us three. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I think mo uh, I, I saw a thing that the co-eds at UCLA were voting for best looking guy on the team. Um, I don't like their chances. <laughs> so uh, like we got, you know, we, we got a lot of, <laughs> a lot of stuff in the works, man. Yeah. It's great for these guys, man. They, they deserve it. Uh, the more the, the, you know, the more deals they can get for all, all these kids. You know, I'm all, we've talked about it. I, I'm, I'm all for it. But look for our hair product line. Uh, do you understand cryptocurrency now, Coach? Um, I, I, I understand <laughs> cryptocurrency. It can disappear just like any other investment. So I'm trying to make sure I educate Jalen on everything's not always a positive. <laughs> you get a little bit older, you, all, you, you, you know that investment, you know, when people call you the investment, maybe not what you think it is or they wouldn't be calling you. All right, anybody have anything else? Dan? Well, first of all, Mick, congratulations on last year. So, uh, real, I know we're running a little bit late, so real quick question for you. Uh, and, and for the players also, I, I'd really love to know from the play, from both of you, uh, how you elevated your game w when you got to the tournament because I I mean everybody was really happy and exhilarated for the Pac-12 last year but it seemed like Hami and Johnny you guys like took off man you were like on another level and and for coach talk a little bit about Tiger Tiger Campbell to me I mean because I mean he he is like unbelievable in terms of decision making uh, knowing when to pull it back. Uh, and then if you get off him, he can make a shot. And I thought he was like just unreal as, as the season unloaded. I know it's a long question, no, but I, I, it was exciting last I year watching it. the Bruins. The, these guys know 
I appreciate you asking about somebody besides them because they love Tiger. They they understand how important he is for us. What I what I would share with you is um, that that we were young. You know, we we were young. Jaime got on the floor as a freshman because he hustled. Last year, he, he was as the year went on, he became more uh, of being able to showcase his skill level and become a guard in our four guard offense. So experience helped him. You know, over time, experience helped him. But Tiger has one thing I need to do with Tiger because he he's so good with the, taking care of the ball. I think to get him to the next level, I need him to to maybe take a few more chances. Uh, we've really worked hard with his shooting in the off season, and and I give him all the credit. You know, I think he's gonna he, he's gonna really sh shock some people with that. So I think you know part of his growth. And, and these guys went through it is, you know, making sure he knows you get more trust in him to go be just be more aggressive at times to create more offense for us, whether he shoots it or he passes it. But he's he does an unbelievable job of taking care of the ball. Well, I thought sometimes people thought about playing five on four and maybe, you know, not not guarding him. And that yeah. th that certainly wasn't the answer because he came up big. I guess Johnny didn't like my question. No, he, he's, Johnny's he, fighting he, the cold. He just took off. He, Johnny's fighting the cold. He had to hit the bathroom. He didn't yeah. want to sneeze. Um, he, 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 he wanted me to tell you, he doesn't have the vid. He's good. He's, yeah. just, he's fighting the cold. So, But it was a grow. You know, I would let Jaime, you know, go, go on. You know, I just try to remind people, you know, everybody's not one and done. And when you're dealing with the normal progression of a guy, um, you're see you saw it with both of these guys. You know, Johnny had no off season with us, you know, so, I mean, then he's hurt, hurt to start the year. I mean, to stand to reason, it was going to take him some time to hit his stride. And the same with, you know, Jaime coming in, uh, you know, he's done nothing but improve constantly. And I promise you, you're going to see the things he talked to Casey about, both of their playmaking skills, and they understand that it's not all about how many points you get you know, for our team and for their future. It's, you know, it's not mutually exclusive what the best thing is. It's the same thing. But it's easy to coach them because they're highly intelligent guys. Like, they, they understand the game. I mean, these guys, they eat, sleep, and drink basketball. But I think you got to give guys a chance to progress, and that's, that's what they did last year. Yeah, going back to your question um, about, uh, you know, just taking that leap during the March Madness oh. tournament, I mean, you know, Growing up as a kid, that's just something you always dream about and uh, uh, playing in big moments like that. So when you, you get that opportunity, I mean, I know for myself and Johnny, like we weren't going to take that for granted. And we were going to make the most of it. And I mean, uh, big time moments call for big time players. And you know, I think that just kind of goes to what, you know, our, our hard work has put in uh, to basketball uh, to be able to showcase to the world, um, you know, our hard work since, you know, we were kids. And we, we didn't want to take that moment for granted. Okay, that's all we have time for. Uh, appreciate you guys being here today. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations on last year and best of luck this season.